Welcome to Rochambeau, the podcast about unique competitions, extraordinary events, and other amazing adventures. I'm Ted. And I'm Kim. Welcome back, guys. Yeah, welcome back. We hope you are doing well. Indeed. And you look good out there today. You in fewer land, gorgeous. I like what you did with your hair. Oh, thank you. Yes, it looks nice, <laughs> not, doesn't it? Not you. Not me. The, them. Listener. <laughs> the listener. Your hair looks great, too. Well, thank you, Kim. I'm having a good hair life, which is nice. It's true. Yeah. You are. <laughs> I'm, I'm blessed with hair. Yeah. Indeed. So what's going on? Well, I did something very exciting recently. I know you did. Let's yeah. talk about it. I hopped in a car. And drove for 14 hours <laughs> from Atlanta to Mackinac Island, Michigan. And pray tell what for? Well, I went for the 51st annual Stone Skipping and Gerplunking Championship. Right on. Yes. You and your stones, man. Yeah, man. You gotta, can't get enough. Got to travel to where the stones get thrown. All right. So this is obviously different than what you've done before in Scotland. Right. That was stone skimming, okay. which, as everybody knows, is drastically different than stone skipping. Totally. Right. Obviously. Yeah. Um, only a fool would get confused by the two of those. Oh. Yeah. I like fools. They're fun. So dude, what do you know about Mackinac Island? I know nothing. Right. I knew nothing about it either before I drove there. <laughs> and I know one, it's really far away from here. Yep, 14 hours 14 from what hours, I heard. Yep. Yeah. It's on an island, which I, I kind of knew that part. Yeah. Um, but it's up in the UP. Upper Peninsula Upper, of Michigan. Yeah, with all the Upers. Yes, yeah. I love Upers. I'd never been up there before. It's an amazing spot. It's beautiful. Really is. Yeah. I probably went up there about three times when I was 15 and 16 years old. Okay. Because a childhood friend of mine moved from Atlanta back to her family's home uh -huh. in the UP. So as a young teenager, I got to explore the UP a little bit. So she was born a Uper and then became one later in life. And probably still is. she is. still there? You don't know? I don't know. You know you're a terrible I friend. Lost, I lost touch with Marianne Gimmestead. Marianne Gimmestead, if you're listening, please contact us. Thank you. Use the red courtesy phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, the UP is a very special place. People up there are very prideful of it. It's very beautiful. And I found it interesting that it's a large number of French, Canadian, Finnish, Swedish, and Italian people live there, and they still claim that. So it's got its own funky vibe Neat. going. Yeah. And it's very wild. You know, there's a lot of sports. There's mm -hmm. outdoor sports. There's boating. Uh, Mackinac Island is on Lake Huron, which I have never been to Lake Huron, but I went swimming in it. It was cold. Good job. Yeah. Anyways. This competition started way back in 1969 by a man named Bill Raby. Um, he's somewhat of a legend up there. He's put on a bunch of crazy stunts throughout his life. What do you mean by crazy stunts? Well, he had a group called the Unicorn Hunters, <laughs> which today has a vastly different meaning. Yeah, don't look that up on Urban Dictionary app from work. Oh, gosh. Yeah, okay. yeah it's, it's got a thing. Um, and they, he started a snowman burning day. Back oh, in the early fun. 70s to celebrate the beginning of spring. I love it. Yeah. What a great idea. Um, and then he started the stone skimming competition. And he was a chairman for like 23 years until the, he passed away. Stone what? Stone, I'm sorry, stone skipping tournament. That's right. I, I mean, only a fool would get them Only confused. a fool. And you were looking <laughs> and talking to one. <laughs> so one very, well, a lot, there's a lot of interesting things about there. It was a fort, you know, blah, blah, blah. But in the early 19th century, they banned automobiles. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's all horses and bicycles. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's cool. Neat. A lot of shops and little bars and stuff. And unlike Scotland, where I went for the stone skimming competition, the sun was out. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. All day long. That's yeah. cool. No raincoats. Yeah, <laughs> it was cool. <laughs> of course, um, the stones were slightly different. I was used to the slate in Scotland and in upstate New York, where I'm from. These are more sandstone, and they weren't as plentiful. Okay. Yeah, like in Easdale Island, there's a billion stones. Everywhere you walk, there's a beautiful stone to throw. Here, a little harder to choose, but there's also good stones. How did you find your stones? Well, uh, that's quite a scandal. Oh, do tell. Yes. I did not know. Well, there's a lot of things I don't know. <laughs> as we found out. <laughs> but I did not know that you were supposed to only use local stones. Okay. So I brought my own. From New York? From New York, yes. And uh, so I was going to throw, and he's like, are these island stones? And I said, Ooh, no. Oh, somebody caught you. They caught me, yeah. How did they know? Because they're gray, <laughs> and their stones so different. are tan. And slate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, got it. Yeah. So he actually dipped them in the water and said, oh, now they're island stones. So. 
Aw, hey, so go. he let you throw he, with he, your slate no, stone. He did, yeah. Aw, and baptize them. And baptize them. Neat. And also, since this is for the number of skips, not mm-hmm. distance, but um, when you get there, you sign a sheet. You have to make up a name, which I was very confused by this. I thought me and my girlfriend were up there, and I thought it was like for a team, like a team name like they do in Scotland. No, you just make up a clever name for yourself. When you meet the announcer, he's going to say this name. Okay. Right? So I came up with a stupid name. You came up with like a trivia night. Yes. Team name. Right. Which <laughs> made no sense. Give me an idea of what they were looking for. Like what was somebody else's name? Well, like you could see there'd be, there'd be a Skipper McGavin. Okay. Right. Yep. There might be like a Turbo Pete. Sure. or uh Bodie McBoatface. Yeah. Bodie McBoatface. <laughs> right. Got yeah. it. Mine was Never Skip a Beat. Oh, yeah, that is much more a team trivia yeah. name. Yeah, my lady is a musician, so I thought it'd be... Totally. You know, we're working, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no. Never skip a beat. Not very clever. I think it's very punny. I should have, if I would have known, I would have done something rochambeau Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, like Rochambeau. <laughs> that would have been a great name. It's one of my favorite words. Right, I know. <laughs> um, so anyways, there's a sheet of paper, and it has all these different terms, and I didn't know what any of them meant. So there's something called a pity pat, and those are the short skips at the end of a of a run do those all count they all count great yep so those are the little dudes mm-hmm. or the pity pats a plink those are the big ones those are the clean clean cut skips as they say usually at the head of a run the beginning of your throw plonk is when a stone sinks on the first hit of the run that is the same as in stone skimming that's true yeah i remember you plonk. saying yeah. your second turn you plonked it i plonked it um you plonk out as acting of throwing a plonk so there's many divisions, but in this division, you win a year's supply of fudge. So there's even a term called... That sounds so subjective, by the way. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. How do they know how much I need right. per year? Right. That's very presumptuous. Of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a term called play the fudge. And these are, I guess there's people who just try to win just so that they can win fudge. So what are you here for this year? I'm just here to play I'm the here fudge. For fudge. Yeah. Yeah. That means also something else on the internet. <laughs> so don't Google that one for more right. either. <laughs> so I mentioned the categories, mm-hmm. right? So there is a couple in there that we did not have in Scotland. There's the Gerplunker, which I mentioned at the top of the program. Great word. Yep. Yeah. This is the children's form of stone skipping. It's dropping a rock into the water. And when the sound goes, Kerplunk. So do they have a children's division or are you talking like babies? This is like under eight year old division. Under eight. So yeah. Kerplunkers. Kerplunkers. Okay. Yeah. This year that was won by a four year old from Flint, Michigan. Aw. His name was Jet. How does one Kerplunk better than another? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. It's got to be really subjective. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all cute. How do you pick one? I don't know. I don't know. They should all win. Um, and then there's the under 12s. That's the Pebbles division. This year is won by a young man named Rusty Stone. Oh, my gosh. Perfect really? stone sk- skipping name. Yes. He's got a future in this. Yeah. He got 15 skips. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. Pretty good. Yeah. Then there is the amateur and open division, which I was in. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's just everybody else. So it was interesting how this one worked. I was used to getting a number or a name. I have a name. Um, and then calling your name and then you go up and you do your, your thing uh-huh. and then you throw three times yep. and you're done. This, you just walk up on the beach with your piece of paper. You find a judge, you give him the piece of paper. He should, tells you, you got six throws, which is nice to have six. You throw, he counts, gives you the piece of paper. You bring it to the announcer. So how was it? It was pretty good. Uh, I plonked out on one. Okay. Did decent on a couple other ones and got 14 on one of my skips. That's which awesome. at that moment was in the lead. Ooh. This is about halfway through, so that was still, you know, yeah. Very Except for the cool. 11-year-old kid who did better than me. <laughs> Luckily, say. he was pebbles and I was open. That's right. Right. Then I brought my paper to the announcer man who was reading off people's names, doing little talk. He was everything exciting, keep the crowd excited. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was quite the, quite the joker. And I gave him a piece of paper, and this happened. Hi, who are you? Never skip a beat. Never skip a beat. You look like you could be a boat captain in Jaws 3. That was me. Is anybody? (laughs) I've never heard that one before. (laughs) Never heard it before. Never heard that one before. Yeah, never skip a beat from Atlanta. Also, sir, there is no advantage to lying about your age. Sorry. 48 years old. Sorry, not believing it. 14, dude. That's awesome. 14 skips for never skip a beat from my man from Atlanta. Thank you. 
That's hysterical, Ted. Yeah, I know. And you do have the look. <laughs> of you a 1970s look. ship captain. That's right. Yeah. Of, a, of a Richard Dreyfus-esque type guy. Yeah. Yeah. Hilarious. I was wearing a flowered shirt, so that <laughs> probably helped with the, the A look. Hawaiian boat captain. <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't they all like that? I don't know. Anyway, so that was fun. The winner in this group was a man named Dana Olson Blub, who had a much better name than mine. His was Plop. <laughs> was it really? <laughs> yeah, he, that was his fake name was Plop. His real name was Blub. He went to Plop. Hey, there you he, go. He knows the value of a short name. Fair enough. Yeah. He had 17 skips. Wow. And right the very last minute, he was, you know, he'd say, I'm going to lead. I'm going to lead. Like the last thrower got 17 skips. Oh, wow. I uh, said a skip off. There was nerves was in that? the air. It was exciting. And how'd they do in the skip off? Um, Plop. Plop won. Oh, good. Yeah. So once you win, you could choose your year supply of fudge based on someone else's interpretation of how much you need for a year. <laughs> for those who are wondering, it's four pounds mailed each month for 12 months. Yeah, that's a lot of fudge. That's a lot Holy of fudge. Holy moly. Right. So it's, that's, it's, a, that's uh, a pound of fudge a week. <laughs> that's crazy. So they're not actually kidding. They're like, <laughs> this is a year supply of fudge for a fudge enthusiast. Anyways. So he won, and he chose to move on to the Pro Division. Mm. Yes, which is our next category. Good segue, Plop and Fudge. So yeah, these are the big guns. And this year, this is the 51st year, but this year, two new and interesting developments happened. Do tell. Okay. The first was the first stone was thrown out by the governor, Gretchen Whitmer, Michigan's governor. She did pretty well. She got about five. Um, And then... This was all broadcast live on ESPN3. It's going to be on the Ocho. On, it, it, of yeah. course it will yeah. be. Yeah, It was super cool. They had uh, real announcers and stuff. It was the first time ever? First time ever, yeah. Wow, people must have been flipping out. They were, because it upped the level. You know, They had live action. They had replays, apparently, on the playback. The announcers, as I said. What on earth does that sound like? You want to hear? Yeah. Let's go to the clip. You're watching the Mackinac Island 51st Stone Skipping Championship on ESPN3. Well, a family of ducks uh, right in front of where we are skipping, but we're going to clear away. They understand what's going on here at Windermere Beach on beautiful Mackinac Island. Look how high these waves are coming in now. Oh, he tried to go right in between those waves. and it, oh, oh, man. That was a, a good one. That was definitely a good skip. To the judges, let's see the replay on that one. Ooh, an instant replay. Yes. That sounded tense. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, and that hit the water again. Yeah. There we yes. go. Okay. They done. skipped over the ducks. That's hysterical. Yeah. I've listened to golf announcers before, and yeah. it's definitely got a similar vibe. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I don't think probably, it takes itself quite as seriously. Yeah. Probably less ducks in the... Yes. Uh, now, it wasn't all um, mellow. There was some uh -huh. crazy action that went down. Really? Yep. One, there was illegal stones, Ooh. much like I tried to pass off. Yes. But he got caught, got reprimanded and had a stone taken away. Not as lucky as you. Yep. And then at one point, a young man named Nate dog got up to throw and this went down. Nice waggle. <laughs> Oh, he oh, fell in. Oh, yeah, he oh, fell in. And look at the skips there. Oh, it's still skipping. My <laughs> goodness gracious. All right, let's look at it again. Bang. Oh, and that's... poor Nate dog. <laughs> <laughs> that's a sign of a real professional, though. Yeah. He fell in the water and still got 18 skips. That's amazing. Yeah. He did some also other cute things. He had uh, a sibling or a relative, maybe like a nephew, Come up with a sign, and stay in front of the cameras, and be like, Nate Dog's number one. Aww. My uncle throws stones. That's adorable. I know. My it uncle cool. throws stones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, I think it said my uncle rocks, and then mm. it's, in little words it said skips rocks. That's so much cuter. Yeah. Uh, he had the crowd behind him on that one. Awesome. So in addition to Nate Dog, who was from San Francisco, by the way, who flew in for this event, there's big names like... Kurt, Mountain Man, Steiner, Justin, Bugsy, Sailor. There's a man named the Maniac, Hard Luck, McNutty, Skip. Well, they're all kind of named Skip. Top Gun and Nate Dog. Nice. Yeah. It's There's a Motley like crew right Motley there. Motley crew of rowdies. Uh-huh. Yeah. So um, how'd it go down? Well, let's see. So I didn't talk about this yet, but the conditions were not perfect. 
As the ESPN announcer stated, it was very windy and pretty choppy. Not ideal. Not ideal. But we were all playing with the same deck of cards, so that worked out well. So in between the waves and the wind and the ducks and the boats coming in and out, it was tricky. Not everybody felt comfortable in their shots. Like sometimes people had to rush. There was a shot Mm -hmm. clock, as you may have heard in there, Mm -hmm. 30 seconds. Seemed rather arbitrary. But there was a tight race for first for a while with 18 skips. And then at the end, Max Top Gun Steiner took the win with 20 skips. My name is Maxwell Steiner. Uh, I was the champion today. I I won it with 20 skips. All right, that's pretty impressive. It was a rough day out there, too. There's a lot of wind and a lot of waves. Yeah, I was actually pretty nervous about all the waves uh, today. I actually haven't thrown a stone in two years, so seeing all the waves kind of uh, freaked me out a little bit. So I uh, wasn't too sure how it was going to go, but ended up in my favor. Yeah, good work. Um, how long have you been stone skipping? I've been stone skipping for at least uh, 17 years or so. Um, I've been doing it since I was like 10 years old. And where, where did you grow up that you were skipping stones? I grew up in Gross Point, Michigan, um, but we'd vacation here on Mackinac Island every year, and uh, they'd always have this competition, so I'd always enter it and just work my way up in the rankings. Yeah, it's been uh, a pretty cool ride. I actually won the Guinness World Record in 2013 with 65 skips. So that's Max. He's a pretty awesome guy. Sounds very cool. Yeah, very down to earth. And that's I love how he started off competing there and has worked his way up and through yeah. in his window. Win totally. Again. Yeah. Total family affair. It was, everyone was really nice on the island, like just all throughout the whole oh, weekend. I'm sure. Beautiful people, yeah. So after I talked to that Steiner, I talked to Kurt Steiner, grabbed him a little while later. And Kurt is the world record holder? Yep, 88 skips. 88 skips. Yep. That is baffling. I know. I can't even fathom how that happens. How long does that take? 88 skips long. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I think that happened in Pennsylvania. I guess there are some good rivers there mm-hmm. to skip. So I got to sit down with him and talk to him about the future of stone skipping, the nature of competition, and his philosophy on it all. See, stone skipping began as such a tongue-in-cheek thing for so many people that there's these tournaments around the world already take the term, like, international championship or world championship right but they're not really like where the maximum stone skipping venue ought to be ultimately right so i i'm thinking a world championship would have to be in a neutral new turf you know place maybe even rotating through different continents you know like uh, europe is big in it but they do distance and Japan's big in it, and they do a combination of distance and skips uh-huh. with kind of an aesthetic overrule thing. Oh. You know, yeah, like the prettier 20 will beat the, you know, uglier 20. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. So, ultimately, though, all of this is not just about trying to make a, like a high-power sport. It's, I mean, to me, if you, to get philosophical about it, I get philosophical about it. It's about getting youth in this day and age with all of its uh, high-tech <laughs> temptations of attention, right? Back into, you know, water, sand, air situations, you know. You know, get outside, look at a horizon. And, and, and one thing about stone skipping is it, it, it requires you to study a natural object with an intent in mind, right? It's so evaluative and experimental that I like the kind of archaic echo going on there, you know? And and it can be creative and isolated and meditative, right? And it can also be wide open, uh, like picnics and stuff like that. It's a group thing or a private thing. It can be a competitive thing or it can be just a low stress thing. You can do it to be try to be artistic, and you can try to do it to be, you know, record-oriented, you know, number-oriented. And I, I like the mix, you know, as, as long as the bass is always just kind of chilling. <laughs> you can go off on your crazy things and, and relax back to, you know, enjoying seeing a stone float on water, you know. And, and being able to trace it back to something you did. Right. You know? Yeah. Nature's natural frisbees, you know. They just, except they run on the water and you pretty much can't get it back. <laughs>
So that was only a little bit of what Kurt and I talked about. It wasn't all relevant to this, but it was awesome to sit down and talk to him. He's a super great guy. You had a nice little bonding moment. Yeah, we did. He's cool. He I sounds hope, cool. Hope to see, see him out there on the old stone skipping trail someday. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Ted Ledoux, good job. Thank you very much. I had a good time. How fun. Do you think he'll go back next year? I'd love to. I want to go there all the time. Okay. Yeah. It's a beautiful place. The, just to go to the island, spend a weekend would be amazing. Throw in some stone skipping. Perfection. All right, Ted. All right, Kimberly. How do you feel about me starting out the calendar this week? Sounds fair. Guess what Saturday is? The day after Friday. It is. You're right. Your turn. Okay. No. (laughs) Saturday is National Cowboy Day. What? Yeah. So that's a thing. It's been going on since 2005. I think it's been going on longer than that. Yes, indeed. But Sorry to interrupt. Back in 2005, someone decided it was a good idea to create a national holiday to preserve and celebrate the role that cowboys and cowgirls have had in our history. So what does one do when they saddle up and head on down to the... Cowboy Day. Right. So it actually gets celebrated in a lot of different areas of the country. Okay. So depending on where you live, definitely worth looking into whether or not your town has any events going on. But one of the biggest events is in Fort Worth, Texas, Mm -hmm. at a place called the Stockyards Historical District, which Mm -hmm. seems like a pretty... Cowboyish place? It's like a newer version of a little Western town. Oh, it's really super cute. And there's a lot going on there throughout the year. But during their National Cowboy Day, they have a ton of crazy competitions going on Uh and a whole lot of fun. As a matter of fact, American Cowboy Magazine, that's Uh a thing, Okay, named it the best cowboy tribute ever in the country huh yeah pretty cool so they have a cow milking contest right a quick draw contest sure armadillo races of course youth fiddling contest fiddling which might not mean what you think it does <laughs> 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 they have a parade they uh-huh. have a rib eating contest and then one of my favorite things i read they have a contest for the person who's wearing the most worn boots Wow. Right? Yeah. Thing goes on all day. Starts at 10 a.m., ends at 10 p.m. There's music all through the day. And once again, that is happening at the Stockyards Historical District in Fort Worth, Texas, this Saturday, the 27th of July. That's amazing. We continue to prove that they'll give an award for anything. Oh, yeah. But that's the best. Because <laughs> we all deserve to be a world champion at something. Right. Just, you just don't know what it is yet. what it is yet. It might be your boots. It could be your boots. It could be the way you fiddle. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I've mentioned this before, and we had an episode on this. The Gambler 500 yeah. is going to be in Georgia, North Georgia. This weekend. This weekend. Are you doing it? I might be. You are working currently I'm, on a car? I'm working on my car. We'll right. see if it's done in time. All right. Yeah. I certainly it's, hope it it's is. It's getting close, but it's it's touch and go. Very cool. Do you know where the trails are that this one would go through? No idea. They don't tell you that until like day okay. of. Yeah, it's a secret. And for people who haven't heard that episode, give a quick background on what the Gambler is. Okay. The Gambler is a rally. It's not a race. It's a rally where you go from point to point, mostly off-road. In inappropriate vehicles. So hopefully you have an old minivan laying around or you spend 500 bucks on a beat up old Camry. You take that. Non, Perfect. Non-off-road cars, off-road. And they trick you into picking up trash along the way. That is phenomenal. Yeah, great. It's a great group. Yeah. Very ABG cool organization. people always be gambling. I love it. Right on. Well, that's just a couple of cool things that are going on this weekend. Surely you've heard of some other stuff, Mm -hmm. and it would be really cool if you reached out and told us about it. Because we don't know about it. No, we need to know what's going on in your hometown. So reach out to us via social media, or you can just email us directly to RochambeauPodcast at gmail.com. Right. Thanks very much to Cadillac Jones for the music this episode. Thanks to you guys for listening. Please take a minute and subscribe. If you've enjoyed this, please give us a review. It does help us grow, and we appreciate you guys. And what the heck? Tell a friend. Yes. Just one. Yes, please, and thank you. Yeah, Yeah. just one, not two. No. For heaven's sake. No, it's silly. Just one. Just one. All right. Till next time, people. Goodbye.
I thought there should have been for social media. Some of these fudge places should have had like a, a fudge packing area. You can take selfies. <laughs> Understood. Understood. Yeah. I paused before that so we can cut that out if you want. Oh, good. Yeah. 